Nice. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Nicky time. There he goes. Blocking traffic. Wow. <laughs> that gorgeous? Yeah. Wow. Holly, isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely stunning. Yeah, we had Intech trailers build it for us. What we want to do is be able to have like a mobile showroom. Very and that's nice. the whole point behind it. I had the idea, I, they've made a few of them in the past, but not very many. It's got lights across the top. Is that cool? See the lights? Isn't that nice? Way cool. Oh wow, it's got LEDs all the way around, top and bottom. You see this, Holly? Power vent? Just push a button and it pops wow. open. Is that cool? That's Check this out, nice. you guys. This is awesome. Oh, oh yeah, there you go. Look at that. I love I it. I hate it. Ridiculous. Okay, okay, honestly, truthfully, can I put my car in here? No. No, I'm not gonna let you put your car in there. It's missing half its parts. Okay, it's a I got a good side. idea. Why don't you put Royal's Jeep in here? Put it in here. He was here working on his car and that. Whatever, Mark. Yeah, get a job. Whatever, Mark. This time on Graveyard Cars. This car is all numbers. Numbers motor, numbers transmission, all original car. I got you this for my birthday. You ever see anything like that? No. No, because today's Hondas and Toyotas don't have any cool like that. In a quick one, two, three, I'd like to just go over what's the most important part of the VIN. Should it have double lights? <laughs> nothing. What the f I'm done. I'm so ready to go home. Coming to get you, Barbara. The unburied dead. Coming back to life. My name is Mark Warman. I work with my worst enemy, Darren Kirkpatrick. Give me a gun! And my son in law, Josh. Whoa! Along with my best friend, Royal. Well, all right. And our newest team member, Holly. This is exciting. We bring dead cars back to life if we don't kill each other. Oh, Mark. Oh. Oh. It's gonna be a bloodbath. Oh. The new Intech trailer is absolutely gorgeous. Perfect piece of machinery, well executed, and absolutely stunning. The Challenger sunroof car is gonna look amazing in it. Only problem is the Challenger sunroof car needs to be done first, so we gotta get hot. While all the guys got lots to do on the sunroof car, I did give Holly a small project to give to the guys. Let's call it extra credit, uh, but that extra credit needs to be done too. So what I want you to do is I want you to give an assignment to the Three Stooges, okay? They're always talking about how easy the camera guys have it around here, how, what, what's so hard about making the show, right? So I'm thinking, what better way, in lieu of the new surprise? I've kept the project over at the studio to myself, uh, it's been a lot of work getting it done. Uh, Overstock helped us so much because we had such little budget. But uh, I was going to wait to the end to reveal it to everybody, but I decided to share it with Holly, and I'm glad I did. She absolutely loved it. Then to have the guys, each one, be responsible to make a three-minute reel, a three-minute film, okay? It has to be on something historical or topical of the Sunroof Challenger. Okay. They can use any of the equipment, any of the sound, anything that they want that's here, except the people and the crew. They have to do it themselves, okay? Because remember how easy it is for them, right? They're going to do a three-minute bit. The person that makes the very best reel gets to use the Sunroof Challenger for an entire weekend, and I'm going to buy him a $100 gift certificate at the favorite steakhouse. Wow. So that's going to be a motivation for right. him. And no, okay. you can't compete. To do the best <laughs> video, and it has to be on what? Sunroof Challenger. The Sunroof Challenger. And I'm not, you know, I'm just saying do the best you can. I know none of them are editors. I know none of them are camera guys. But this would be a great opportunity, number one, for what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Number two, for them to see it's not as easy as it looks. So, that reminds me. Are we? I got you this for my birthday. You got. I had a bunch of them made up. It's my birthday. True or false, in 1969, the Charger Daytona actually started life as a Dodge Charger RT. The answer coming up after the break. So is it true that the legendary 69 Charger Daytona actually started life as just a Dodge Charger RT? The answer is yes. 
The Dodge Charger Daytona was a last minute entry into NASCAR. Therefore, Chrysler didn't have much time to get these cars ready. Once Chrysler had decided that the Charger RT would be a good candidate for the transformation into a NASCAR, they plucked an RT off the assembly line, reassigned the VIN number, then sent the car over to Creative Industries to have all of the transformation work performed on the car. The restyling of the Charger Daytona called for a one-piece steel nose cone with vacuum-operated hideaway headlights. Cooling holes were drilled in the fenders and an aerodynamic scoop was placed over the top of it. The sexy recessed back window of the Dodge Charger was removed and a plug was put in its place, therefore allowing the coefficient drag to be decreased in the wind tunnel. Lastly, a three-piece adjustable wing added the necessary stabilization at high speeds to allow the Daytona Charger to be the first car to go 200 miles an hour at NASCAR. Visit GraveyardCars.com to learn more. Our brand new Intech trailer is gonna be the perfect showcase for our 70 Challenger sunroof car. I gave Holly the task to round up the guys and have them create a short Challenger video. And there's still miles to go on the sunroof Challenger. Hey D. Yo. I didn't want to have to wait on the influshables to show up, so I went out and got Derek to help me install the steering column on the sunroof car. Installing the steering column in a car is not necessarily difficult work, but it is precision-based work. You've got a steering gear with splines on it, and there's one set of splines that have to line up. It's where there's one spline missing in the exact same location as the coupler itself that's at the end of the steering column. So if those two aren't lined up, you'll never get the steering column to go down all the way onto the actual shaft itself. So it takes two guys. One has to be inside the car, lining it, pushing it, moving it towards the steering gear. The other guy has to be on the outside, lining up those two splines on the steering gear. You ever seen anything like that? No. No, because today's Hondas and Toyotas don't have anything cool like that. Rim blow steering wheel. Looks like a telescoping steering column. Tell me if I got park lamps. Park lamps. Both park lamps. How about headlights? All four. <clears throat> Two. Two. Let me turn those off. Turn the left signal on. Left signal. Beautiful. Right signal. Right signal. Check the backs. Should have a left double lights. Double. Doubles. Yeah, nothing. Nothing on the right. Nothing right. on the right. <laughs> Even though you take all the necessary precautious steps in wiring a car, making sure that you have a nice new harness, or if you can't get a new harness, make sure that it's a good quality used one, you still can have problems. I thought I felt something in my back. I can't. Yeah, don't start with me. You're supposed to be here an hour ago. Oh, there's Josh. Insurance shopping, buddy. We're going to put the interior trim panels in place. So why don't you get, go to the Mr. Mopart's room. Look in the book. See what screws hold that trim panel onto that car. Meanwhile, we will do the stuff that requires a brain, such as plumbing out the wiring for the power windows, which he got completely installed and working. Oh, good. Good, Derek. Now, do the power windows work on your car? Oh. Hey, where's your charger at? <laughs> where's, where's your 70 charger? You are. Where's your that 70 awesome. charger, Mark? That is a ride. You don't have power windows. Oh, hey, he don't God. have a 70 yeah, he charger have anymore, a does he? Option. He don't have a 70 charger either, he? Does he got a V21, a P31. Do you have anything that ends at 31 on your fender tag? If I wanted a stripper, I'd pay a dollar and go across the street. Your car's a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. 440? 440's a stripper? That was pretty good, dude. Oh, that was Vinyl top, top's a stripper? That was oh, pretty good. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Leather interior's a stripper? Oh, no. <laughs> that was a hey, huge Darren, hit. Hey, Darren, it's all right, man. That was a huge hit for you to have to You pay. got a car, he doesn't. That's oh, right. my. That's why he wouldn't answer me, buddy. That was a big one. That was a big one. Hold that, I need to go get the spray glue. Yeah. What's the matter with you? Why won't you put me in work where I ask him? Where's the brick? Oh, God. Hey, by the way, where's the package story I handed you 30 seconds ago? I don't know. Fake in high places, Mark. Don't be in it, grab it. If that's it, grab it. Get it down. Oh, ho, 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 ho. You realize that for every two steps me and 
uh, Derek, take forward. You move us back a foot. Come down here, I need you to hold that. Toughen up. Yeah, <laughs> you Lack and thinner, Come pick on, it up. Bro. Okay, set it down. So I need you to hold that side out for me. Is this the tar and feather gag? Come on. I'm not dude. doing anything. I'm just spray gluing yeah, it, buddy. You're, you're spraying me down here. That. And what is this stuff called that I just put on there? What's what's the manufacturer call it? It's called jute, J-U-T-E padding. Jute padding. Jute padding. This is really cool on our sunroof car, knowing that it came to us as an empty shell, and now it is beginning to look like a car again. Having the steering column in place, knowing that the dash is ready, this is really starting to come together and look like a cool car. Yeah, so you guys probably recognize that I got that I'm writing articles now in a couple of different magazines. Oh, I just I didn't know if you knew I was writing articles in magazines. Darren, did you have? Oh a, yeah, how could did, we forget? <laughs> did you happen to catch the Chrysler Power magazine article I wrote? Did 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 you guys get to see it? The magazine Chrysler Power. No, oh, we don't care. <laughs> I've actually been in like 20 different magazines in the last on, couple of years, but this is the... What is that? What is that? Hey, hey, hey. Sweet. There you go. Trash power. You got it. That's Big it. article on that. Darren found the hole. Give me a screw. Probably the biggest article they said <laughs> that's ever been written Why didn't you give me the one. shortest? Give they me a did, They gave yet. me like uh, <laughs> five pages or something. Let me find it. Yeah. While we are getting a lot of stuff done on the Challenger, it's a lot of the detail stuff. It's a lot of the minute things that take a lot of focus and a lot of attention, but don't have a visual payoff. Best thing I can do is get rid of Josh and Darren, send them outside, let them get the next round of clips and fasteners and things that we need in place for the next installation. Meanwhile, Derek and I are going to work on getting all the plumbing, all the hardware, all the alignment for the power window systems. Use my car for a shelf. Hey. They're not very smart, are they? Oh, hey, how you doing? Good. So Mark asked me to talk with each of the guys about making a three-minute video about the Sunroof Challenger, like a piece of history about the Sunroof Challenger. Can I ask why? Well, he said that you guys have been complaining about the camera crew and how easy they have it, and so I think that he oh. wants everybody to just kind of experience what they do hmm. a little bit. Maybe he should come and experience what we do. How am I gonna do this? He, Tell me. He said that you can use the camera equipment, but you can't use the crew. Really? That's just the rule. A video, a three minute video about the Sunroof Challenger. Yes. Are you for this for real? I'm gonna slap him. He put you up to this, didn't you? Um, so I think that the timeline for this is sometime next week. So. This year? Okay. So. Piece of cake. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Good luck. Oh, thanks. I think that Mark had me talk to the guys to take the heat off of him. I'm the scapegoat. She's frozen solid. I want it right on that skid plate. Whoop. The progress on the Sunroof Challenger is coming along very nice. Only minor bumps in the road. Most importantly, we got the steering column installed. Darren and Josh are fighting tooth and nail against the video assignment Holly and myself gave them, but they better get it done. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a photograph of the dash bin on my 70 Challenger RT. I do that whenever a car shows up here at Graveyard Cars because the one component you cannot have reproduced for one of these cars legally is the dash bin. It was made originally by Chrysler. It has a Chrysler logo on it and it uses the rosette, the very unique rosette rivets. In a quick one, two, three, I'd like to just go over what's the most important part of the VIN. The VIN tells you a lot on the Chrysler muscle cars. It tells you the year, the make, the model, the engine size, as well as the horsepower output on it and where the car was made. So, when you walk up to a Challenger like this and you read JS, that's Juliet Sierra 23 Victor Zero Bravo, those are the most important parts of that VIN. The rest of it is the sequence number that Chrysler gave it as it went down the assembly line. That first letter, J, that means it's a Challenger lineup. You need the second digit on all your muscle cars, 68 on up, needs to be an S. Challenger RT, JS, uh, Coronet, WS. Uh, GTX RS. After that, the 23 in this particular case of the Challenger tells you it's a two-door coupe. In the case of Chrysler, they always made the fifth digit back in these days represent the engine size and output for horsepower. This one is a V like Victor. That was their 390 horsepower 446 pack engine. So in this case, here's our representing the Barracuda 
We've got a BS Bravo Sierra 23 November Zero, and this car was built in Hamtramck, just like our Challenger was, which is the B for Bravo code. So over here, we've got a 71 Challenger RT. It's same things apply. Your first letter has to be a J for Challenger, S for special, meaning it's an RT. This particular one is a 383 Magnum. Instead of a zero like our other two cars have, this one has a one. What does that tell us? That it's a 71. If it was a two, it would be a 72. Unfortunately, in 1972, you could no longer get a big block in an e-body car. This is a 68 Dodge Charger RT. So in this car, we've got the X-Ray Sierra 29 Lima 8 Bravo. What does that tell us? X-Ray, Dodge Charger body, S, RT. Remember the S always means RT if it's in the second digit of the VIN. We've got a 2.9. That represents the fast top Dodge Charger. The L is a 375 horsepower 440 Magnum. It's a 68 Dodge Charger X-Ray Papa. That's the premium line. That's the one before it got into the RT. So the XP is still a Dodge Charger. It's still a 29 car, meaning it's a fast back roof, just like all the Chargers 68 to 70 had. This one's optioned with a B code, B for boy, or the 225 cubic inch slant six. So really, in essence, what I'm telling you to do is start studying your VIN numbers, figure out what all of them mean so that no matter where you're at, you'll know if you're looking at a real muscle car, whether you're looking to buy one or you're just looking at a car show for one. Study your VINs, learn your cars, enjoy your Mopars. Well, these books are just full of information. What's up, ladies? Speaking of ladies, did Holly come up to you and talk to you about uh, some three-minute movie or something? A video? A yeah. three minute video she wanted us to do on the Sunroof Challenger? Mm. Yeah, why? Yeah. Was that your idea? No. Was that your idea about the uh, movie? Oh, the thing with Holly? Yeah. I'm excited about the video. Give me a chance to play around with the camera and some editing tools. It's ridiculous. You want to do it? No. I think this whole entire assignment that Holly came and talked to all of us about is completely ridiculous. Is she doing a video? I can hardly wait to see it. What, is she going to make brownies? We have so much crap to do. We're already behind on the Sunroof Challenger as it is. Why do we need to make a movie about it? You know how Darren is always saying how easy everything is? Well, it's a great example of how easy it's not. So when he goes to make his own video, he's gonna find out firsthand that it's a pain in the ass. He doesn't know anything about editing, but I got that going it's on. It's all and in then... the editing. Are you even gonna do it? No. Have you even as far as I'm about concerned, As far as I'm concerned, I never even had the conversation with her. Oh. Do yourself a favor, do a good job. <laughs> you'll, you'll be glad you did a good job. Well, it'll be fun. You know, I kind of found myself just not paying that much attention Holly who? when she was talking. Holly who? <laughs> <laughs> what, what video? It doesn't surprise me a bit that Darren and Josh have no interest in doing their project, their extra credit. Royal's about the only guy on the team that doesn't automatically try to get out of something. It wouldn't surprise me if he was actually the only guy that got his project finished. The fact is, I asked for it because I wanted it, and it needs done. We're gonna get a jump start on one of the new projects, the 70 Hemi Charger, by getting it disassembled while we're waiting for parts to show up for the Sunroof Challenger. 426 Hemi, one of 56 made. 410 Dana Super Track Pack. This car is all numbers. Numbers motor, numbers transmission, all original car. Most of the paint on it's original. Vinyl top, black in color, black guts, console shift. Okay, we all know that's really cool stuff. But to this guy, this is his whole world. The Hemi Charger came here from New York. The gentleman that owns it, his father actually purchased the car back in 1970. Had it his entire life, and it was always the family plan to have the father give the son the 70 Hemi Charger after he passed on. That's where we are today. So now the gentleman I'm working with is excited about getting the car back on the road again, back to life. Um, he has a lot of great stories to tell about it, and we're really looking forward to helping him realize his dream. The motor is seized, it does not turn over. He's worried that the motor could be bad, which as you know, when you talk about a one of 56 numbers matching 70 Hemi Charger with a Super Track Pack, that can devalue it, not only devalue it, but just emotionally for him, that's gonna be a shot, because this is the original motor that his dad drove all the time as he was growing up. So what I promised him I would do is the second we got a break, I would get it up, get the motor and the transmission and the rear end out of it, get the motor disassembled, down to the machine shop and have it magnafluxed. Once that's done, we can take our time putting it back together again. I told the owner that every guy on this team is gonna make sure the car comes out as perfect as a charger can be restored. You, you haven't earned the right to open the hood. No, honestly, on this a is Hemi the car. first Hemi 
I've ever touched. I get to put my hands on a 1970 426 Hemi. I never in my life imagined that I'd be able to touch a Hemi. I have never touched a Hemi motor. Okay. Okay, that's okay. I'd like to get the hood off of the car, Royal, get the console and the shifter ready to come out of there. Right now, everything's working great. The guys are all working well together. We're getting a lot done. Uh, Derek and I are pulling the windshield out, and as soon as we pulled it out, I noticed that there was a sign the owner had made right before it left New York for Oregon. That's pretty cool. This sign made when it was coming out from New York. It was so cool. It was a, hey, no, no, no. We're not throwing those away, fool. That guy's dad gave him those for his birthday, and I told him I would restore them. So I do not want to see these thrown out back, rolled over, kicked in, used for weight, hauled off to the scrapyard. These are savers. I'm going to restore them, and I'm going to send them back with the car. He can decide if he wants to put them on later. Can you just buy okay. a set of new ones? Those are the, Cheaper? You unsentimental, bald son of a Those are the ones his father gave him. Hey, I found the old exhaust Yo, tips. Mark. God, I'm surrounded by romper room. room. It's like romper room. room. That's what I get. I get screamer. Screamer. I don't have no talent. I'm not a funny guy. So to You're get your attention, I'm a and I'm going to hit you in the eye. I'm going to finish your rhymes because I can't come up with my own. I'm nine feet tall. I scream at the top of my lungs, and people think I'm challenged. After I got the guys refocused on the disassembly, I was walking past the driver's door, saw Royal in there taking the shifter out, and it dawned on me, he ain't using the right wrenches. Whoa. How long are you going to milk the motor? That is not, that is not right. The shifter, look at that. Unless I'm mistaken on a console, but in 1970, they used the wedges to hold it in. In 71, they went to the bolts to hold unless, it in. Unless it's the B body. Then. Unless on the B body with that. Because this car is so original. I can't imagine somebody's been there. To be able to drop the motor and transmission out through the bottom of the car, especially on a B body, you need that shifter out of the way. That thing stands three feet tall off the ground. So to remove it, normally speaking, on all 70 model like Cuda and Challengers, they used wedges to hold it in place into the shifter box. But our 70, which I know is an original car, actually is bolted in which is how they did the 71 to 74 e-body step. This is kind of the part that's fun for me is learning the little things. You can't know everything about every car every minute. So I'm gonna research that and find out exactly why that shifter's bolted on instead of wedges. Okay, we need to get the exhaust off here. Okay. So you're gonna need to take these nuts off, take the, take the pipe straight back. I wanna save these pipes as a pattern just in case. Accurate doesn't have them, I think he does, but in the event that he doesn't, I want to keep those as a pattern. We got the top end completely disassembled. The bottom end is disassembled. Motor, transmission, exhaust, drive shaft, all are ready to come out. The only thing left is to get the forklift underneath it and lower the motor and transmission down to the ground. We have the legendary 426 Hemi on the ground and ready for disassembly. All of the photographs have been taken. All of the documentation has been done on it. All we have to do is take it the rest of the way apart, load it in the back of the truck, and take it down to the machine shop. What year Dodge Charger was made famous by the motion picture Bullet starring Steve McQueen? Was it the 1968, the 1969, or the 1970? The answer coming up after the break. So what year was the Charger in the movie Bullet with Steve McQueen? It was the 1968 Dodge Charger RT. The 1969 Dodge Charger was made famous in the television series Dukes of Hazard, And we all remember the famous wheelie scene at the end of Fast and Furious featuring the 1970 Dodge Charger. Visit GraveyardCars.com to learn more. This is why I love Royal. He's the only guy that's actually excited about doing the video project on the sunroof car, and at the same time can hop over and help me disassemble the legendary 70 Hemi Charger. We have the motor, the transmission, the rear end, and all of the cooling out of the car now. We got the motor and transmission out of the Hemi Charger. I want to get it completely torn down and find out why it doesn't want to turn over. We're keeping our fingers crossed that it's just the fact that possibly the pistons have frozen into the cylinders from not being turned over for many years. I'm about as anxious as the owner is to find out what it is. So we're just going to stay all day, keep on this thing, get it torn down, get it off to the machine shop ASAP. I've never taken a part of Hemi, have you, Royal? Nope.
Uh, we're doing pretty good on the engine. We got a little bit of a standstill just because the intake manifold is really fused into place and you have to be really careful because it's aluminum. So we got to take our time to try to get that thing to finally break its seal. And once it does, we can get that off. Then we can get the heads off. Then we can raise it up and put it on the engine stand and find out what's going on in the lower part of this motor. Right now I'm putting in some penetrating oil in the cylinders, mostly just to help break it up so between the ring and the actual cylinder wall itself to do the least amount of damage to the walls. Come on, Nancy, turn the motor over. She's frozen solid. If you force one right there, you can end up breaking uh, the ring up against the piston, causing damage in the actual cylinder wall itself. So we're gonna have to take the pan off it, take the rest of it apart, and actually take the pistons out this direction. Pistons, we can buy new ones, they obviously need it. We're not gonna be able to save them anyway. The part you don't wanna sacrifice is the original numbers matching block and cylinder wall. Uh, there's no disappointment here. I'm Actually, this is a really good thing that there's not freeze cracks in the valley, which is one of the things that can happen, or freeze cracks in the block. So far, everything we're looking at looks really good. We expected to put pistons in. Once we got the Hemi engine completely apart and inventoried and good photographs of everything that we have, we called the machine shop so they could come down, pick everything up, take it back to the shop, put it in their hot tank, get everything clean, get it bead blasted so we can inspect it for damages. Having received all the additional pieces that we need to put the interior together in the Challenger, we can now start that assembly process. We've got seats, door panels, trim panels, kick panels, garnish moldings that have been painted and are ready to go in. Once you have the sides built out, like your trim panels, kick panels, the rear package tray, all that you really have left is putting the seats in. Once that back seat is in, you have two front seats, you put those in, the car looks complete. That's good looking. That is just nice. My goodness. Had Tristan come out from Trifer Auto Glass and install the windshield in the Challenger. Uh, one thing I like is that he will listen to me. You need to have the right thickness of the urethane so that when you put the reveal moldings on, there's no gaps, it's not too high, it sets the way it's supposed to. That's why we use Trifer. Okay, I want to get all the fluid levels stopped off. Your job is to make sure that the transmission is stopped things, off. I got places you to got be. Nothing. I got a birthday party to go to. Tegan or Trajan's or somebody's party. Tonight, I forget which one. There's too many T's there, you know what I mean? We work all day together as a team, but usually at night, the guys start to fall apart. All I want to do is get the car out of the assembly room, out into the shop so we can do the rest of the work on it. All right, close okay. the hood, help me get it out, then you can... Remember what happened last time you and Royal used a jack into the car? But everything seems to be getting to be a battle. Everything's a war. People aren't paying attention. That's how accidents happen. Put that right under the six pack K-frame, right on that K-frame so that it surrounds it so it can't come off. So Mark and Roy will get the famous idea. Let's move the Challenger out on the jack. Put it underneath the K-member, slide it around. You know the skid plate? Yeah. I want it right on that skid plate. And all of a sudden, a flashback with the Daytona. What happened to the Daytona? Boom! Or not. All right, came off the jack. Did it damage anything? No. Did it scare everybody? Yes. Okay. Deja vu. I told him something was gonna happen. Boom, deja vu. There it is. Martin just gets in a little bigger hurry, and cuts more corners than I would. You think maybe we should put the dollies on them or anything really to be safe? I mean, then it won't go pshh. Mark, what if we pull Once, the lift? Can we I pull don't, the lift? That's out? what I want. That's all I'm trying to do is pull the lift that way. Well, help me out and let's do it. Good thing is the car didn't get hurt this time. A um, little bit of wiggling, bickering. We got it out of there. Dude, get I a fist that. on okay. my side. Everything's okay, guys. Okay. Screaming, jumping, Man. all over the place. They, hey, you guys are twins. They last 30 seconds in Vietnam. The twins. Well, Mark, I mean, what's, what's worse, overreacting or dropping it off to Jack again? Okay, can we go back now? <laughs> stop, 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 stop. What the f Straighten the wheel out. Well, it's not. What the We're getting too Straighten close, buddy. You just kept going. If you just straighten it out, we go back. Idiotic Slowly. mind, son of a You're the one minding the wheel. Crazy. Calm down. You know what? At this point, I'm done. I'm so ready to go home. Captain Commode out there is chewing our asses. You know, we're not working together as a team. We need to prioritize and we need to focus. That's how this is gonna get done. Why am I the only pushing? Three. Sons Just stop it, Darren. Well, okay. Before I get pissed off and snap your neck. Maybe we need to get somebody else to do the steering part of this. Go ahead. Oh, go Royal, you do no, it. No, go ahead. 
Nope, I'm not doing it. You know, I got the car through the doorway, no problem. I mean, that's more than Sergeant Suppository and his floor jack can say. Yeah, we got the stupidest guy on the planet steering it. Great. That's back. funny, Josh gets it first try, first Keep try. Going. Now get out of there, now get out of there. Imagine if Mark was in here. Not I good. know, because I'm fat and you're a great person, okay? <laughs> the car should have been outside an hour ago. We broke five of the seven seals from the book of Revelation just trying to get it out. Now I can finally go to work on it. Where are we headed with it? Right there. I keep it, I keep it cranked. For tonight, it can just go right here, because you pansy asses have to leave. Good riddance to bad rubbish. You guys want to go? Go. The fact is, I'll get more work done by myself in solitude with peace than I will with squat, dump, and flush here. They want to leave? Adios. Don't do any of the things that you want to do, because if you do, I'm going to slit your throat open. It was, it was a fun time. You know, it brings back memories from the past. The numbers matching 426 Hemi has been sent off to the machine shop to be cleaned and magnified. We got a ton of work done on the Challenger, including finishing all of the interior, putting the glass in, and after a small scare, we have it moved into the shop, and it's time to enjoy the fruits of our labor. I rounded everybody up, let them know that we need to meet over at the studio so I could reveal my big surprise I've been working on. Don't you think we're gonna be in the Mark's always full of surprises. Oh, well, Chandler looked great in that trailer. Light shining on the trailer, it was just beautiful. That's a, that's a pretty color. It's not some green old moss green or something. Isn't that gorgeous? Right? That's almost as pretty as See, while you're home playing house, I'm taking care of business. He's been working hard in the Challenger, I guess, burning the midnight oil and wanted us to see it firsthand, so he brought it over today. It was, it was great. It would have been nice to have a little bit of help. But, but you didn't put it together by yourself. I didn't put the whole thing together by myself, but I put the last little bit yourself. of it together by myself. You did good, Mark. Looks great. Thank you, Josh. That's all I'm looking for. Now's the moment of truth where we find out who did their job and who sloughed. I have a feeling I already know the answer to that. Holly. Yes. Did you get all of the videos? I didn't. I got one. Royal. It was done yesterday, right? Everything yep. was supposed to be done yesterday. You did the video. Good. Did you tell? <laughs> yeah. I thought you know You didn't do count. yours? You didn't no. do yours? I don't know why Darren and Josh didn't do their videos. I mean, it was really pretty easy. Because I got my video done, the other guys didn't. I got to drive the car first. That was really cool. OK, so here's the pecking order. You did your homework. You get to drive first. Holly always gets the princess seat Run in the front over. because she knows what she's doing and always takes care of business. You waste a space can drive second. You waste a space can drive third. Holly can wrap it up. We all clear on that. I couldn't believe my eyes. This thing looked completely flawless. All the hard work and dedication didn't mean squat until he pulled up in that thing. And I mean, it almost brought a tear to my eye. It was beautiful. It was nice seeing this car done and completed and being able to drive it. Yeah, it does get me excited about mine. It brings back old memories and stuff. The smell of exhaust, the, the smell of fresh paint burning off the engine stuff. Yeah, it makes, me get, it makes me excited about getting my car done sometime this century. Take care of this car. It's worth more than your life. Don't do any of the things that you want to do. Because if you do, I'm going to slit your throat open. You understand? With a rusty knife. We don't always have the opportunity to go drive these cars. In the case of the Challenger, we do. I think that they should be able to take some time and enjoy it and uh, enjoy the fruits of their labor. Yeah, I think you've done that from time to time too, Mark. Be careful with my baby. I think, truthfully, Mark is the one that leads by example, and he's a bad example. You know, I drove as a teenager and, and young 20s, and I drove them back then, but really didn't have the appreciation for them that I've developed over the years. I mean, they were just, other, they were just another car back then. It's, it's really been a blast getting, being able to relive a little bit of my youth. It's always fun to drive the cars. I always worried about it getting wrecked or crashed. Nothing happened to that one, which was good. So it was a good day. It was, it was a fun time. It always brings back memories from the past. Being able to drive this car was so much fun. You know, I know I wasn't born back in that era, but I mean, I, I took a step back and I gotta say, they knew how to make their cars back then. It was, it was incredible. It was so fun to drive it. It was just like so exhilarating. I loved to watch the process of how it just like came into its old self and um, it's just, it's so beautiful. I wish it was mine.
go good? Everybody worked really hard on it. They came together ultimately at the end and produced an amazing piece of history back in the world again. The greatest part is, if all y'all is ready, the studio is ready for the unveiling. Really? Try to allow me to have two seconds of joy before you guys take one on it. Yeah. You wanna see it? Let's go. I'd love to see it, Mark. I, I would love to see it, Mark. Come hither. Is this where we need our demise? We've Entree vous? Oh, nice. Hey, that window looks really nice. This is Enter. amazing. Have you been here working on this the whole time? This is the project I've been working on. When you guys are home in bed, I'm over here <laughs> working late nights. I know. Completely I completely remodeled the whole building. I haven't even put my yourself? thing together yet. No, I, I had help. I had contractors. We're not done yet. That's really nice. Anybody that knows me knows I'm willing to give credit where it's due, especially in the case of like a vendor. Well, that same mentality and that same business practice applies in any part of business. So when it comes to calling up overstock.com and saying to them, Listen guys, we don't have a big budget. I want to be able to do this for everybody. We need a little bit of help on this. Can you please put together what we could afford to do? So we got the concession stand done. We just don't have all of our signs in Hey, you got yet. candy already. Got Royal's favorite. Uh, the concession stand was more of a dream that I figured I'd at least have the room in the beginning. I was able to put a popcorn machine, snow cone machine, the hot dog warmer. We've, we've got carpeting, we've got just so much stuff that we couldn't normally have done without that kind of partnership, without that kind of help. It's gonna be awesome. So, so do you come so down here every day after work and on the weekends too? Like a man cave? Is this what this whole thing is actually? No, it's yeah. not a man cave, sir. No. This was something I did for you. I did fun? this for you guys, for us. Yeah, as a group. Fun. You did it for, for fun. As a group. It was beautiful. But something in the back of my mind told me that Mark built this mainly for himself. You actually took the time to think of me Holly, Darren, and Roy. And he's using us as a scapegoat. So, I mean, if, anytime Mark starts to get back into a corner, he starts to change the subject, which he's very good at. Either that or he'll try doing, you know, the, the Rocky Balboa knock you out kind of thing. Without further ado, beyond that door is Ladies our first. theater room. Oh, nice. Are we ready? Little file. What are we walking into? Ah. Wow. This ah. is amazing. Dang, man. Well, wow. Yeah, well, yeah, dang, man, ought to be more than that. I should be smelling dumb right now. You well, the last time yourself. I was in here, yeah. it looked like a freaking insane I know, sign. I know. That's why I'm saying this is awesome. Wow. This nice. is all done up. We got leather. We got recliners. We got... Oh, this is from Overstock? Spoiled us like a brat. Wow. Spoiled it. We didn't have much budget, and they made sure that we were able to get done what we needed to get done. Yeah. Wow. This it's is amazing. Truly, it's awesome. Really Everything amazing. about it's awesome. I'm as excited, if not more excited, than anybody else about the theater. What I considered in the beginning was going to be a daunting task actually turned out to be a lot of fun. You could go to the website and immediately just start searching. Just type it in. Well, I typed in recliner. I typed in home theater. I typed in popcorn. And here's all these hits for things that are available. I did not think that in the beginning I would be able to, with our budget, with what I had, be able to supply our place with the BenQ projector. We got the power screen. We got all of our leather uh, seats in there. I mean, those things are recliners. They're actually more like something you'd see at home, but they're actually designed for a home theater. And uh, I, I mean, I'm just tickled to death. I mean, yeah, you can say it's a man cave, you can say it's all those things, but it's just a really neat reward. We don't do a whole lot. We don't go a lot of places. So this is gonna be a fun thing that we can use and I think get a lot of years of enjoyment out of. I am really looking forward to seeing Royal's video. Um, I think that he'll do a really good job. He's pretty thoughtful when it comes to that and he's really knowledgeable. Don't go to sleep, you idiots. That's what we're doing. Yeah. All right, you well, by the way, you notice that nobody wanted to sit by Holly? <laughs> you can set this down right Sorry. here. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry, I better move my feet over. Okay, let's see if we can. Okay, here's Royal's video. Oh. Just turn it, just turn it off. Yay! Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> I did enjoy the video for what it was. I mean, I enjoyed it to the aspect of I got to relax and watch something and laugh. I'm not dogging on Royal whatsoever because he, his skills obviously are better than mine since I didn't make a video, but I could make a video. I just didn't have the time to do it. Ah. Whoa. Okay, here goes. Okay. <laughs> I fixed it. <laughs> oh. Let's give you a little background on the 70 Challenger. Uh, I wasn't ordered. Wasn't ordered with a flip top guest. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, Put me to sleep. That's nice. I think it was the first 300. And then um, 
as you can see. Beautiful 440 Magnum Orange. It's and good, Royal. I'm just laughing because you're um, so entertaining. Curious enough, yeah, in 1967, they did not pay. You know, after I saw Royal's quote video, I put a lot of thought, in, thought into what I really think of it. At first, I thought it was ridiculous. Now I think it's just totally stupid. The orange. 69 was the first year for Orange. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. The it's Challenger okay. is just a sexy car. It has oh. you know, four headlights. <laughs> I loved seeing Royal's video. It was hilarious. I thought he did a great job. 1970 was the first year of the high impact colors. Okay, um, I love. Which was uh, in violet for Plymouth or plum crazy for, wasn't it plum crazy? <laughs> Hot banana, and the orange. Perfect. I enjoyed seeing my video on the big screen in the movie theater, but it just goes to show that I need more practice. <laughs> A sweeper. Sweeper. <laughs> it's horrible, Royal. Yay! Royal Gala and Yoakum. Oh, who put that in there? Directed by Royal Gala and Yoakum. Photography by Royal Gala and Yoakum. Look at the Gala. Four. One of that delicious cans to interior. Look at Mark's little name. Why is my lettering so small? Awesome. One, one, one. But what, what'd you do, let up off the shift key? What? Uh, Soup Bowl Head was able to come through in the clinch. He not only helped me finish the Challenger, but he also got his video done too. Uh, that's why he's my buddy, that's why we're pals, that's why we're amigos, even if he doesn't have any hair. Coming up this season on Graveyard Cars. We've made fantastic progress on the cars in our shop. We finished the Phantasm Tribute Cuda just in time for Don Coscarelli and A. Michael Baldwin to sign the car and take it for a joyride. I love this car! The AAR Cuda got finished and delivered to Chris Driscoll just in time for me to blow his doors off on the Hot Wheels track. Today is your day. And we finished the one of one 1970 Dodge Challenger RT factory sunroof car. What do you got to say about that? Without a doubt, this is one of the most beautiful and valuable cars we've ever restored. But this season is not over yet. Our 1970 Plymouth Superbird is back from the dipper and ready for its new sheet metal from our friends over at Auto Metal Direct. And our friend Tom Partridge is waiting impatiently for us to finish his 69 Charger Daytona. When's it going to be done? And if that's not enough, we've got two Plymouth GTX convertibles just added to the queue. The first belongs to one of the biggest Mopar collectors in the world, and the other is the property of one of the biggest human beings in the world, former world heavyweight pro wrestling champion Bill Goldberg. Don't miss a second. We got work to do. The stakes are higher than they've ever been. There ain't nothing we can't fix. On this season of Graveyard Cars.